with Professor Dan Peer, Vice President of Tel Aviv University, Vice President for Research and Development. Danny is a, a pioneer in the RNA nanotechnologies, and uh, I'm happy to invite him to give you his talk. Okay, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for the kind invitation. So our lab is studying how to manipulate cellular function in order to generate novel therapeutic approach in different diseases, among them cancer. Now, the challenge in cancer, as Ronit already mentioned, that even in 2020, we are talking about nearly uh, 10 million new deaths just for this. The traditional cancer therapy includes, as you know, radiation, surgery, chemotherapy, and also, I should mention, immunotherapy. But in most of them, there is broad range of adverse effects, uh, drug resistance, and high recurrent uh, rate, which means that we need to shift a little bit the paradigm. So one potential solution is to go after targeted drug therapies for precision medicine, and we really strongly believe that the RNA-based approach, which we experience in the last two years, is a real revolution and could be utilized also for this field. It's more precise. We can actually design and manipulate genes. Those nucleic acid could be protected, the increased therapeutic effect, and uh, some strategies are clinically proved and the field is booming. So in RNA-based therapeutics, we can silence genes, mostly with siRNAs, but there are other strategies. We can activate genes using messenger RNA. And in fact, our lab was the first to show systemic delivery of messenger RNA in a cell-specific manner in animals just a few years ago. What was, seems to be then, as science fiction, became this revolution. We can edit and replace genes by different approaches. And as an example, we'll talk today about the CRISPR-Cas system and how we can utilize this for cancer. So the work of uh, Jennifer Dodne, Emmanuel Charpentier, and I have to mention also uh, Fang Zhang from the Broad Institute and MIT, turned this approach from bacterial acquired immunity discovery to really eukaryotic genomic editing. And basically, we're talking about two compounds, the Cas9 protein and a guide RNA that needs to be sequence complementary to target DNA. And there are two approaches here. One can precisely cut the DNA, and if you have the right template, could create a knock-in system or a knockout system. So how specific it is and how efficient it is in a case of cancer, a multi-gene related disease. If we knock out one single gene, is it really enough or do we need more? So I'm going to focus mostly on knockouts, but I'm telling you that we are working hard also in knock-in approach. And if you look at the clinical applications right now, ex vivo is happening. So mostly in leukocytes and in hematopoietic stem cells, cells are taking out, expanded after manipulation using different genome editing approach, mostly the CRISPR-Cas9 one, and are going back to the patient. But also we have witnessed last year a breakthrough when a non-viral lipid-based nanoparticle is used for rare genetic disease and it's injected systemically into humans, and the preliminary results were published in New England Journal of Medicine seems to be outstanding. So can we really utilize this? There are different approaches to take this on, and we decided to move on the, probably one of the challenges one, uh, trying to coin trap Cas9 mRNA with single guide RNA, and this work was done predominantly by Daniel Rosenblum and Anna Gutkin, former student in my lab, now in NYU. And basically, they started working on this in 2014, when the field was very immature. And the idea was how we can coin trap a messenger RNA that is about 4.6 kilobase, together with single guide, which is uh, 
around 120 bases together and deliver them in an efficient way into cells. So this is the potential mechanism of action, and you can appreciate the fact that it's like a spaghetti and the sauce here. One needs to wait for the other. So first, you need to uh, basically translate the mRNA into a protein, and the guide needs to wait. And unfortunately, we observe, and this took us about three years to understand, that the guide are degraded very fast. So together with Mark Belke and his team in IDT, we develop super guides, guides that are highly chemically modified and can stay there enough time inside the cell and wait for the Cas9 protein to be translated. And so on Patro was the first LNP lipid nanoparticle with siRNA that was approved exactly in August 2018. Uh, and that opens the door for other approaches. And this is the predominant lipid there. It's a ionizable cationic lipid, pH sensitive, and can take up very nicely siRNA, small interference RNA that are in the range of 20 to 24 base pairs. However, what happens if you want to take larger payloads, for example, mRNAs? Then you need to design special lipids. And we have been working on design special lipids for quite a long time, already from 2013. And these are some examples of some of the lipids. And we tested them in this uh, system, in the CRISPR system. And it took us some time to really uh, do, I would say, a thorough job in terms of um, testing them, and we identify a potent lipid that is much more potent, much more efficient than the rest. And with this, we went into two animal tumor models, a marine orthotopic glioglastoma model, and Dinora Friedman is here, and she was part of the study, and a an human metastatic ovarian adenocarcinoma. We decided to take out the cell cycle gene called PLK1, or polylykinase 1, which is basically a regulator between the G2 and M in the cell cycle. And we found outstanding results in vitro. We can edit the gene in 85%. Before us, you know, the, the in vitro data were suggesting that genome editing is possible in a very, very low yield, and in vivo less than 6% only in the liver. So we push this field dramatically. You can see also cell cycle arrest and cell death. And in ovarian cancer cells, 91% cell cycle arrest of fourfold different and cell death of tenfold. And then we decided, can we really do a local delivery in GBM? So cells were injected intracarneal in a stereotactic instrumentation, and 10 days later, uh, we used this CRISPR uh, lipid nanoparticle and show that in vivo we can get genome editing. If it's a GFP model, 75% in a single dose, or if, it, uh, if it's the right targeted version, the PLK1 with 70%. We also show that uh, apoptosis is the mechanism of, uh, of action here. And we move on to look at kind of a therapeutic approach with the GBM cells. And we injected uh, locally either a single guide GFP or a single guide uh, pololykinase 1, which are the uh, tested system, and of course, uh, PBS as an example. We follow up for 60 days, monitoring the body weight and, the, uh, and basically based on imaging. And we have seen that the single administration of the single guide pololykinase results in a potent tumor inhibition and prolongs the survival dramatically. So a single guide you can probably see here Somewhere, okay, you can see that the tumors are much smaller. And again, single administration, 60 days, uh, change in overall survival by 50%, uh, sorry, 30% and median survival by uh, 50%. What happened with the uh, systemic delivery of metastatic ovarian adenocarcinoma? Here we utilize a different system, basically a universal linker developed by uh, Anit Kedmi and Ofar Vaiga. Again, former PhD students, and we use this system, which we call the asset anchored secondary single chain enabling targeting. And basically, with this system, we can immobilize any antibody from any system with a very, very precise orientation on the lipid nanoparticles. And since the ovarian cancer cells highly express the epithelial growth factor receptor, we could utilize an antibody against those. 
And then uh, if we inject those uh, local, first the cells uh, intraperitoneally and systemically the particles, we have seen that is super, super specific. And we got a genome editing in the right locus of PLK1 of 80%. I just want to mention that all the experiments were done blindly. All the next generation sequencing were done in Iowa, in IDT, blindly. So we were very happy from these results. We also did um, a therapeutic uh, approach, basically injecting the cells, and then 10 days later, uh, we injected either a control uh, particle with isotype uh, uh, antibodies on the surface or targeted one, um, or the tested system with single guide PLK1, and again, follow up for 60 days, body weight, and imaging. And here you can appreciate the uh, amount that we have seen, the tumors, uh, that are tiny in the tested system, it's also dramatically changed the overall survival to 80%. So just in summary, we have developed a novel, highly potent and highly efficient lipid nanoparticle platform for the delivery of COS9 mRNA and single guide. It's actually a platform, so you can change whatever single guide you want to put inside and also whatever antibody you want to put as a targeting moiety. We disrupt PLK1 by this CRISPR LMP that results in significant G2M cell cycle arrest and tumor cell death in vitro. And a single administration results in apoptosis, apologize for this, an EGFR targeted version potently inhibit tumor growth and increase the overall survival in metastatic ovarian bearing mice. I want to thank my group, very talented group of people the uh, funding agencies and companies that support us over the past few years. And I'm going to end up with a very, very short uh, movie that probably explained better than me what you have just witnessed. Cancer is a leading cause of death worldwide. Cancer cells divide without proper control due to genetic mutations within them most traditional cancer treatments are insufficient and cause severe side effects because they harm not only the cancer cells, but healthy cells as well. To make cancer treatments more efficient, we at Pair Lab have developed special lipid nanoparticles. The nanoparticles are able to recognize the mutated gene within the cancer cell and destroy it. Allow us to explain how they operate. We insert two RNA molecules into the lipid nanoparticle, a messenger RNA that has the instructions to build the CRISPR protein Cas9, which acts like a surgeon's scalpel, and a guide RNA designed to direct the Cas9 specifically to the target gene. On the outer surface of the lipid nanoparticle, we attach a special linker we developed called ASET. The asset linker binds an antibody that recognizes a specific receptor on the cancer cells. After injecting the lipid nanoparticles into the patient's body, the antibody directs the lipid nanoparticles specifically to the cancer cells, sparing the healthy cells. the Cas9 mRNA is translated inside the cell to the Cas9 protein and then assembles with the guide RNA. The Cas9 guide RNA complex enters the nucleus and locates the mutated gene within the cancer cell's DNA. Once recognized, the CRISPR scalpels cut the gene and permanently disrupt it. The treated cancer cells can no longer divide, no matter how much they try, and eventually die. Our highly effective and precise approach can revolutionize cancer therapy and improve the quality of life of cancer patients. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Seems so easy from the movie. Any questions for Danny? The... Any questions? Yes, Avi? Just repeat the question when you're.
naturally. Okay, so CRISPR is used and other method of genome editing, prime editing and based editing are used mostly for rare genetic diseases. But recently, even in the field of cancer, it's, uh, it's becoming more and more, we are optimistic that, um, that approaches like this will be another layer with immunotherapy and with other approaches to boost either cancer therapy or the immune system. Right. So that's, that's a regulatory question you probably have to ask the regulatory agencies. But the example I can give you that about two years ago, there have been about 32 to 35 clinical trials with uh, lipid nanoparticles and other uh, materials um, in, in clinical trials with nucleic acids. Now we have more than 1,000. So in two years, this, this field has boomed, probably due to the fact that COVID-19 was, uh, vaccines were really a, a, a breakthrough point. But from a regulatory standpoint, when, when I'll be back in my, uh, in my work at the FDA, I will tell you, but it's not here. Thank you.